Captain's log, stardate 192.168.1.11. I am still stranded on this this barren, barren wasteland of a planet with my science officer, ZTech. Hello, good morning, how are you? Good morning, Captain. How, 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 how are we doing on this fine day where the powers, the powers of the conveyor belt seem very much within our grasp right now? Well, oh, considering it's... last night, we're doing great. Oh yeah, we're doing amazing. Doing amazing. Uh, I have some things that I wish to to do today. Uh, one of them, I'm not sure how important it is, but I notice we have yellow splitters, but not any red ones. I, I'm kind of upgrading to red belt, so I would like that at some point. But also, we have something that I know my science officer feels is overly complex and not really worth the effort. Oil and petroleum. <laughs> well, it's not worth... <laughs> 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 It's not that it's not worth the effort, it's just complicated. Complicated. Complex and many, many faceted. If I uh, come into here, like the first thing we need to even start thinking about is the oil, no, no, the pump jack, uh, which is steel, gears, circuits, and pipes. You are right, that is, that is pretty complicated. <laughs> <laughs> it's just too many things to do, it, and for not, it, it's, it's just huge. You think yeah. our, you think it's our factory is big? When we need to add the oil, it's just gonna be bigger and more bulkier. And underground pipes are so messy and annoying, and <laughs> uh, so many problems, so little time to expend. You want us to make the uh, underground uh, splitters? Yes, the red splitters. Let Let's start with the red splitters. They are. Uh... Hopefully, going to be relatively simple. If we have a look in the my crafting menu, I suppose we call this uh, iron gears, electronic circuits, and then the yellow splitters. So here, here they go. I'm going to I'm going to be a ye yellow splitter just for the purposes of demonstration. <laughs> we come on, come on down here to what I assume is going to be the red factory, uh, or are we taking it down through this convolution and off to another factory over here? We need iron gears, we have those production. We need... We need... Uh, what else do we need for it? Uh, we need iron gears, electronic circuits, and the yellow splitters. Okay. I'm gonna do this. That's one part solved. So, Captain, you had a nice sleep. <laughs> I had a beautiful sleep once I'd, uh, once I'd made sure that all administrational duties uh, were done as my captainly duty dictates. I managed to uh, sleep like a baby. A baby secure in the knowledge that everything that he needed to get done has been done for the day. Ah, oh, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. Though whilst I was, uh, whilst I was sleeping, I did have a, a, a bit of a weird dream. It involved you, Mr. Science Officer. So, as you know, in all the many years of, uh, many, many decades, maybe even centuries of space exploration that we have experienced as uh, humans on Factorkio here, uh, we only have ever encountered hostile, non-sentient aliens. Uh, never have we had the technological meeting that we have wished for as conscious species. But, in this dream, in this dream, the we were stood on the fields of earth i i know neither of us have seen earth but i have a, I have a picture in my mind of rolling green fields and blue blue sky in the background with little little white icons all over it it was, it was quite strange but anyway you were stood in this field and down came our first alien contact big glowing shiny 3d saucer as you would expect it to be and you were like ah here they come and you reached into your portal and pulled out a human from the 20th 21st century to talk to these aliens to be the point of first contact who would you choose i woke up at that point i was i was shocked by the whole scenario and it woke me up but it did leave me with the question of who would you choose out of even all the humans ever alive ever but uh, the ones you can think of off the top of your head, who would you choose to be that point of first contact? Uh, ooh. It's a tough one, right? It is a real tough one. I've, I've had many, many suggestions given to me. Like, the first... I, I think you could probably predict what the first suggestion that was given to me would have been. Um, uh, Obama. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, mm, I mean, yeah, great, all right. Uh, uh, as a spokesman for humanity, I could, I 
could think of much worse. I could think of much worse. The second suggestion that we all went, oh, maybe, was Putin. Because <laughs> we're like, oh, but he does know how to get stuff done. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, so let's think about who would be a perfect representative of humanity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who, who, who would be qualified to speak on behalf? Ooh, this is a tough one. It is a real tough one. I mean, do you pick someone like Oprah Winfrey? Someone who is used to speaking to lots of different people? Do you pick a political leader? The problem with picking any of the political leaders is that you end up with them trying to argue for their own country. Yeah. Which I understand, you know. Um, I, I don't know if you'd want, like, maybe one of the like the former EU leaders as they're more used to compromising between different people's wants but even then you know they're definitely going to have an EU bias so it, it's 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 hard I do to have two choices unfortunately i don't remember the name of the person that uh, the first choice neil degrasse tyson oh, that's a good choice yeah morgan freeman Morgan Freeman. I was about to say, actually, you know, do you want to send an actor, an actor with an earpiece, and like, I mean, whoever you send, you're gonna, you're gonna have like hooked up to the World Council, right? Like that's no, that's how no, that needs to work. No, no connection. No, no connection. Just up, up raw. Yeah. Ooh, I mean, like that's yeah, that's also. I mean, hum humans respect that. <laughs> uh, I would just do it like that. No connection. No nothing. You're on your own. Save humanity. <laughs> I mean, the real question is, what what would Morgan Freeman achieve in that scenario? <laughs> well, I don't know. Something at least. So, he he would achieve something. That's the, that's a definite there. He he'd soothe them anyway. Soothe them with the talks. At least we wouldn't start a war immediately. No, we wouldn't start a war immediately. I mean. <sighs> Which science? Which, yeah, if if you were going to pick a, a, a representative of science of scientists, uh, that's a terrible phrasing. But do you send the sociologists, the people who study societal structures, or do you send the physicists? Which ones are going to have an easier time communicating? You know, we okay, so we we're intuitively talking... know. Oh, go on. Okay, so now we're talking about the scenario where we don't actually understand and there is not a universal translator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, like, they, they've landed, they've come out, they've held up their tentacle and gone... <laughs> and we've got what? <laughs> okay, if that's the case, then a physicist. Because, uh, you know, uh, atoms are always the same. Atoms are always the same. Atoms are... Well, so we assume... So we should like. Could you imagine how the world would be rocked? Not not so much the world, but the the collective work of knowledge is that is the human culture would be shaken if they were like, oh no, uh, electrons go around the other way where we're from. <laughs> I, I know that's not quite how electrons move. But you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, I do. But that's always the matter of perspective. I mean, is your red color really my red color? That that is a question, but th th so this question was actually um, thought about by now was it Dyson or F Freeman? Is it Richard Freeman? Well, anyway, uh, the, the 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 physicist who played bongos. I can't remember his actual name off the top of my head. Played bongos. <laughs> Um, but he, he he was like, well, there are things that we can talk about. So if you're if you're literally on the telephone and you can't show them stuff, um, there, there's these things called chirality. So um, I, I don't know if it happened your way, but back in the 1970s, uh, there was this thing called flamidahide. It was supposed to um, to calm morning sicknesses in pregnant women. Uh, it, it was an anti-nausea weapon. Uh, Weapon? weapon yeah why not okay. <laughs> an, an anti-nausea um drug it were it, it's got in the way of all the neurons for fire but anyway it doesn't doesn't really matter um it but it, it made deformed children and it turns out that it's because there was two forms of the molecule there was the left-handed and right-handed one so it was like a ring with a bit coming off it and it could either come off the left or come off the right and they look different that, that, that they, they really look different in the same way that your right and left hand look different you know if you put them over each other you see the back not the front one of those interacted with neurons in a funny way and one of them just made women not feel sick um, 
so there there is this this concept of chirality so w- where we could talk about right and left handed it even goes all the way down to the spin of certain atomic particles i can't remember the exact ins and outs of that argument um the flamidahide one i kind of i know but the uh, i can't remember which subatomic particle has a handedness <laughs> so so yeah there, there there's always places to talk but if you can't even communicate how how do you even get to the point of talking about atoms? I mean, that's 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 a question there. Like, you you would hope that they have like what I'm going to call pictographic references, so you could draw them a picture. Uh, but if they don't, if if they don't communicate, if they don't perceive the world with light, if they perceive the world through a gravity and sound waves, I'm sure that's a thing, right? Um, then, yeah, how do you communicate? That's that's a real. I, I I have I have talked us into an actual dead end there though. I know I know because <laughs> there, there's no if they can't, if they don't use light, how can we even begin to build up structures uh, like conversational structure with them? We just have to find something, something. I, I, I'm fairly sure if aliens landed, the unfortunate thing is we'd take them prisoner and lock them up and then try and learn to communicate that way. If that's the case, they're not using. Um why would you suggest light to be used as a communication method? Uh, not as communication, but it, to uh, interact with the world. So, like, when when I want to know what's just over that way, I use my light receptors, and the light that bounces off them comes to my eye. Okay. Uh, uh, so, when we draw... And, and uh, because of that, we have pictures for atoms and molecules. So, that that would be how we would communicate with another visual species we'd be like you see this molecule here molecule right and we'd talk we'd, we'd try and use that um much like yeah abc's for barbarians you show them a picture of apple and you go apple but if they don't know what a picture is because they perceive the world through um mass density they have instead of eyes they have gravity receptors simple um you start with the simplest things, like uh, get the bucket of water. <laughs> Be like wet. Wow, I mean, that, like uh, what? <laughs> no, that's, that's use the next words. Thing. You don't use words. You use. Um, you use if they're seeing in mass, you use mass to calculate everything. I'm just imagining, like, say they do communicate in the same way. They they, they land and we go. Oh my gosh, they look like us. Um, and then you bring forth the bucket of water because you want to communicate water. Now, the problem you've got is if you put your hand in it and go water, they might think you're saying wet, right? There, there's two different yes. sensations there, right? But if you then put a, mic- uh, a ma- microscope in front of it, they would then see all the microorganisms that are in our water. So, like, how do you even begin starting to get to the substance itself, not the things around it? I think I've got an AK on my deck. I'm not sure. Uh, I think it's a pickaxe. Uh, so there's a pickaxe off my right shoulder, or oh, left yeah. as the camera sees. Um, but this, this on the other side... Oh, you got one as well. I do it, have it, a gun. It moves when you turn around, though. It drops down to your hip, as opposed to being up on your... Oh, maybe it's on my hip there. It just kind I, of sticks out weird. No. It's a complicated question that I'm not qualified to answer, unfortunately. Oh, but I, Mr. Science Officer. Yeah, I mean, this, this, this is one of those big questions that humanity will have to answer itself. When we finally find a sentient species, I'm just going to steal these splitters. Oh, yeah. well. it's, it's, just, it's just something that will be answered over time, at least. I mean, I mean what's the first sentence that you say English do you speak it oh well uh, generally when I meet someone who doesn't speak my language yeah that's the first thing I ask hey do you speak my language <laughs> I mean uh, it, it's just it's I I'm gonna I, use this word I I'm gonna use this word even though it's I'm not supposed to maybe use it uh, yeah is it too is it too um crib uh Pretentious. Is it too pretentious? Oh, maybe. To, to assume that we should, that they should know our language and that we should know their. Uh, I mean, yeah, or, 
Oh, you like that? Okay. Um, it's. it's I don't think it's protect. I think I think it's actually relatively prudent to think that the species that have made it all the way across the gulfs of space has had the time to study our linguistics. I think I think that might. might We've been might sending be right. radio signals for so long. I mean. <laughs> Oh, well, yeah, and even that, just as they're on their way in, they're going to be picking up a lot of stuff, right? Yes. So you'd imagine that would be the point that, that they learn, right? Did they leave knowing we were here? That's that's the real question. Or were they just off on an exploration and were like, oh, we didn't know there was a habitated planet here. Hi. <laughs> to be honest. Because <laughs> that really... That dictates about how first contact goes down. If they just stumble upon us, they're like, oh, we picked up a radio signal, what's this? There's a lot of time that will pass before we... Uh, in that time, in the, that time frame that you just suggested who would be the person that gets transported to the first contact and talk yeah. to the person. Uh, that's the thing. If we're talking about that time, it would be take a long time to travel between... It takes a long time to travel between planets, not just stars. Stars, yeah, yeah. And yeah, to say it takes a long time to travel between stars is an understatement. You know? So the plan would be just, okay, we don't know what's out there. Let's just prepare our best. Let's prepare to the best ability that we have. And, and that's all we can ever do. It, it's the the thing like, you know, I asked, do we send the sociologists in at the beginning of this? And it's why why would we even begin to assume their social structure is anything like ours? And the answer to that is, well, what else are we going to do? Um, um, just give the problem to the AI and just... Yeah, yeah the AI like will solve... Like, in, in all honesty, we'll probably just show them our phone and they'll pick out their phone and then we'll let the phones <laughs> talk to each other. Um, <laughs> Somehow they use the same Bluetooth protocol. No, but the phones will be so intelligent that they know how oh, to speak to each that's... other. Like, cause, cause, like if, if, they, if they have, you know... Use binary, but... that's the way. Yeah, well, that, that binary is used because it is the simplest way of encoding the most information with the least information, if you see what I'm saying. It's yes. using the least amount of stuff to encode the most information. So if if that's what we've discovered as the, the most primitive, not primitive, most basic way. No, the, the like the underlying bit, you know, it's it's uh, binary is to numbers and mathematics as atoms are to matter, right? You know, it's 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 the it's the base level that yeah, everybody should understand. So, so we should okay. In that case, we should use binary to just communicate with the aliens. Yeah, I mean, like we could probably start with counting up numbers, right? It's really easy to count in binary. For, for you know, from a from a certain point of view, you you could show someone a pile of one things with a one <laughs> and a pile of two, <laughs> or yeah. No, just give them a switch. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. How, however, we think they'll understand binary. Yeah, just give here's a switch. One zero, one zero, one zero. Just the the stone pipeline kind of needs to be its own little thing all all on its own place because th this is now empty. This is this yes. is now totally done for. Uh, let's pick all these up. So we we need like what's the input? What do we need to do to process stone? Why isn't this still going over here? Oh, I see. So when stone comes in, we need to siphon some of it off for walls and some of it off for landfills, but not really that much. No, I mean landfill is like this this box of actually landfill gets used really quickly. I was about to say this box of over a hundred landfill will probably do us, but it probably won't. Yeah. So we can get to rails right now, I think. Let me check. So rail, rails are a thing that needs to be made. Uh, we also need cargo wagons and stuff. But yeah, straight rail. Uh, one stone, one steel, one iron stick. And we are definitely going to have to be working on that. But I think we have actually ran out of time for today's little adventures, Mr. Science Officer. Uh, I am definitely going to say thank you very... What were they? They were rails, weren't they? Yeah. I'm definitely going to say thank you very much for joining for this adventure, even though I don't say that here. <laughs> <laughs> Next time, we are going to be working on the rails. 
Uh, and hopefully trying to get the, the whole stone pipeline flowing nice and well. But until that time, Captain's Log, signing off.